G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today, I'm going to be reacting to my season predictions from the start of the year. Every year it is quite funny to look back at what you predicted and to look back and see how wrong you were. So I know Essendon fans out there are gonna have great pleasure watching this video. So let's not waste any more time, let's get into the predictions and see see how I went. I'm going to predict my Premiership team and this year I'm going the boring option by picking the Tigers. I predicted the Tigers to win the Premiership. Sometimes when I'm predicting the Premiership, I can go quite boring. This year in particular, I went with a boring answer by picking the Tigers, but I just thought there's not many teams out there that can compete with their list. I thought Geelong potentially had the best chance to compete with the Richmond Footy Club, but as we saw over the year, Richmond really didn't have their best team on the park and they struggled to compete in a lot of games, especially in the back end of the season. It felt like those sort of four years at the top had taken a little bit of a toll. It's gonna to be interesting to see whether the Tigers bounce back next year. Are they done? Are they completely done? Or is it this last dance? Uh, sort of crack at it for the Tigers. All right, let's get into my top four for 2021. Coming in on top is Geelong. Coming in number two, Brisbane. Coming in number three, it's the Tigers. Fourth, I think up for grabs. I think a St Kilda, a Western Bulldogs, a Port Adelaide, a Melbourne, and a West Coast could pinch four. But for me, I think Port Adelaide's probably my safest option. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with my top four. Um, I got three of the top four right. They're not in order, but Geelong, Brisbane, and Port Adelaide all finished in the top four. I obviously didn't have the Ds in there. The Tigers clearly did not finish third, but that's not that's not, not a bad little prediction. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I said the teams fighting for the fourth position were the Saints. That's probably a little bit wrong, obviously, because they didn't even make the top eight. I said the Bulldogs, the Ds, and West Coast. Now, obviously, West Coast didn't make the eight either, so that was clearly wrong, but I was the only one that I saw anywhere to have the Ds in top four contention. If you go through any like experts' predictions, because I was watching them quite astutely at the start of the year to see where they placed the Ds, everyone tipped the Ds to finish ninth again. Everyone. We were in the eight for majority of the 2020 season, I thought we could bounce back and have a bit of a crack at the top four. I didn't have the guts to put us in top four, obviously. I went with the power and there was a better decision because, well, yeah, the power did make it. But um, I had a hunch the Ds would, would be right up there. My wooden spoon team this year is the Essendon Football Club. All right, here we are. This is what everyone is waiting for. Essendon for the wooden spoon. I really didn't have that many options in my head for the wooden spoon. I felt like North Melbourne competed quite well in the 2020 season, enough to sort of give me a little bit of optimism about them. And I thought the Adelaide Crows did as well. In the back end of the 2020 season, I think the Crows won the last three. So I was quite optimistic about them as well. So I thought a team in and around the top eight would dramatically plummet. That was my hunch, that was my feeling. I looked at Essendon and I thought, they're losing Joe Danaher, their best forward. They're losing Orazio Fantasia, their best small forward. They're losing Adam Saad, their best running backman. I'm so optimistic by the youth that they've drafted, but are they going to replace those three and improve as a team? I didn't think so. Once I'd filmed and edited the video before I put it up, I thought, hang on, I'm going to cop it for this. <laughs> and rightfully so, and I rightfully have, and every Essendon fan has let me know about it, which is quite funny. After round two, though, it was looking good. My prediction after round two was looking very, very good. My rising star for 2021, yeah. Hannah Braun or Bruin. So for my rising star, I said, in a world where Matt Rowe doesn't win it, he was the hot, hot favorite. He only played a couple of games in 2020, so he was eligible. But I didn't want to pick a bloke who had played the season before, so I went with people who were drafted in 2020. Uh, I went out of Will Phillips and Tanner Bruin, and obviously Tanner Bruin didn't win. Probably the best player out of the 2020 draft, if I was gonna continue down that form, uh, was probably Errol Goulden, or one of the other Swannies boys, who burst onto the scene in 2021. But obviously, Lukey Jackson took home the rising star. I, I honestly didn't have him in my contentions at all. Like, he was very, very consistent and really, really handy for us in 2020, but I didn't know whether he was eligible, and um, yeah, I just would never have picked him for the rising star. So that was a bit of a surprise 
for me. My Brownlow medal this year will be Jack Steele. Ripping season last year. It was cool to see him and Petrarca have a breakout year. I love the way he goes about it. He's captain of the footy club now. I believe Jack Steele can win the Brownlow medal. Jack Steele to win the Brownlow medal. What did he come? Top five? 26 votes. Not a bad pick. Ollie Wines won the Brownlow medal. I don't know whether many people would have predicted that. I think that was a bit of a uh, a bit of an upset or a bit of a random thing to have occurred. Uh, Jack Steele I thought was a pretty good bet and he's going to be up there for the next few years. So if you if I double down and I go Jack Steele for next year, I reckon I'm as much of a <laughs> shout as anyone. I think Joe Danaher going up to Brisbane will free up the eel. So I'm going to back in Eric Hipwood for the Coleman medal in 2021. So I backed in Eric Hipwood for the Coleman uh, he had a pretty okay year, the eel. He did his ACL though, which was a very disappointing end for the big fella. Yeah, I just felt like someone who has had three or four years in the system could have that breakout year. And it was obviously Harry Mackay. I'm pretty sure Eric Hipwood was from the same draft. So if I had gone down that that maths and, and the data and the way I had that hunch develop, I probably could have landed on Harry Mackay. I'm not sure why I didn't. Yeah, Eric Hipwood, I, I felt like that four or five year seasons under the belt could have really held him in good stead, but obviously not to be. Surprise All Australian for 2021 is going to be Zach Fisher for the Blues in the forward pocket. Surprise All Australian, Zachy Fisher. Uh, it didn't quite get up for me, Zachy Fish. I still think Zach Fisher could be an All-Australian one day. Unfortunately for me, wasn't the case. I wonder what they'll do with him next year. I wonder if Michael Voss will chuck him in the midfield for that sort of silky outside or, you know, maybe the winger. But yeah, there's a lot of optimism for me personally. I think he could snag an All-Australian one day. All right, we've reacted to my pre-season season predictions and there were a lot of comments saying how much of an idiot and how much of a buffoon I am for the selections that I picked. So I've gone through the comments and I'm going to get some great ones that you guys wrote down that actually did come true or close to coming true and I've picked out a couple of howlers from you guys. So one of the big topics from my season predictions was obviously my Essendon prediction and Jack Cleary wrote, Essendon won't do terribly, we could maybe make finals if we play our best. Like Mike, for his surprise All-Australian, he said, Alir, Alir. Unbelievable shout. I get why Caden has put Essendon at 18th, but we do have some talent. If Essendon works together, we could be a finals team. Joko said, are you sure that Melbourne can get fourth? I was expecting them to finish eighth to ninth, but we all think about our own teams are better than others others. I did. I did think Melbourne would be around the top four. I, In my predictions, I didn't say they were top four. I probably played it safe and didn't have the balls to put them in top four, but I felt like they would be around that mark. Peter wrote, Melbourne are not good enough, bro. Get real. Joe said, take your Melbourne glasses off. FFS. James said, as an Essendon supporter, I'm blocking you. If we win the spoon, I'll unblock. <laughs> All right, guys, a little bit of fun to finish this video. I appreciate all of the support. I appreciate everyone watching. And I'll see you all for some more content very, very soon. Cheers.